What's up? We back at it again. Your boy right here, Antoine Scott, Mr. Look at you. Former U.S. Marine, former Deputy Sheriff. Here to talk about yet again, what does it take? Or how can you work inside of a jail or correctional facility or the penitentiary? They call it the penitentiary. Today, how can you handle seeing a stabbing or a suicide inside of the jail? Or if you work in a deep in that correctional facility, you might see a murder. Boom, 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 boom. Dun, 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 dun. Murder, murder, do. So that's what it is, man. Uh, seeing a suicide, you might see a murder. Uh, might see a stabbing, because no, they always keeping shanks inside of the, even in the jail or the penitentiary or inside of those correctional facilities, they're always keeping a shank on them. And what you're going to do if you're at work and somebody uh, commits suicide, all right? I've been through one, two, three, I think three or four and maybe maybe three, one, two, three, maybe three or four attempts while working inside of the jail when I was a deputy sheriff. And what do you do when you see a suicide has been committed when you see in the dead body? If you've seen the movie, uh, oh my God, Ice Cube. Ricky! It's on top of my head. I, this is a classic movie and I can't even think about it. Ricky! Doughboy, Ice Cube, and the whole crew. Boys in the hood. Come on, Twan, tighten up. You want to see a dead body? And I tell you right now, the first time that I saw a dead body inside of the jail. The first time I saw a dead body inside of the jail. Uh, Carver which he worked transportation. I shouldn't even be saying the names. A deputy, <laughs> act like he had that name, was working the box outside. Now, the deputy working the box outside was, you know, he got the jail keys, open up the box, hit the buzzer, so I can come in the door, and there's time to feed, so he has to hit all the buzzers for whichever door I'm at, because we're feeding on trays. And what that means is, a, you know, the big metal, trays and I got styrofoam trays itself, the white styrofoam tray, like to-go containers, in case you don't know what that is, like to-go containers, which we serve in breakfast. And normally breakfast is being served anywhere in the jail or the prison system, uh, normally about four o'clock in the morning, between four, four thirty, five o'clock in the morning, you get served breakfast pretty, pretty early in the morning. So we feeding, I go to the first cell, you no, know, boom, get up, child time. Boom, trade, uh, second cell. Boom, child time, get up. Child time, trade, boom. Third cell, child time, going in the line. And when I got to the fourth cell, when I got to the fourth cell, I kicked the door in, he was in there by himself. I said, get up, man, child time. You want your trade? So I talked to him, you gotta talk. Wake him up, it's your trade. You want your trade? Child time, and that's because the room is dark. Once you open the door, you know how your eyes don't it don't it don't resonate yet to the darkness of the room. You know it takes a while. So when the door is open, I got a little light from inside of the day room, but I don't have the full light inside of the room. So as my eyes kicked in a little bit, and I opened the door up further and went further in, boy, he was laying there. Arms like these damn glasses sticking straight up in the air. Ah! No. No. I ain't scream, but I went out that joke so fast. Now, hey, I've been in Marine Corps, military. Keep them keep it 100 with y'all. I've been in the military, law enforcement. Couple juvenile correctional places before I came to the deputy, being a deputy. Hey, I ain't never seen no dead body before. I'm keeping the 100. I ain't never seen no dead body. 
And when you see it for the first time, it takes you back a pause or two. Ah! Man, haul ass up on that damn day roll. I haul ass. He did. He did. He did. Mr. Scott, what's going on? The dude working the box now. He was an older deaf man. He, matter of fact, he been in Vietnam. So I'm like, he did, he did. I done dropped the breakfast trays. Damn that. That is not my priority right now. Y'all gonna eat. But right now, we got rigor mortis done set in on this damn body in here. And uh, uh, he, uh, he did, he did. So we call, you know, assistance in day room 20 or something. Whatever, what, day room 20 or something. Boom. Everybody started coming in. We called medical. Medical come around to Dave. I'm dot, 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 dot. So everybody coming in. And sure as enough, he done, he done, uh, that's why you always got to make sure that some stuff we'll go over later in some other videos. Uh, what we call um, like wall inspections and inspections. Because anytime, uh, anytime you check their rooms, you can't rip off the call contraband. Contraband is anything that's not in its original state or not what it's intended to be. Like a sheet, them guys will rip the sheet off, maybe the top or the side. And once you have that string, that's called considered contraband, which you're going to be written up for because you shouldn't rip the sheet and that's contraband. But apparently he tied the, the sheet that he ripped off around his neck and tied it to the top bump. And just I been planning to slay this stuff down until he uh choked himself and committed suicide. And we were covered because anybody that works in the correctional field that you have to check uh day rooms and units uh twice an hour, whether they be 30 minutes apart, uh 30, 45, 45, whatever case, we have to check them twice an hour. So he was checked all night per the log sheet, but apparently when somebody went out. Uh, which happened on another uh, suicide attempt. Uh, they know once the deputies leave out of the day room, nah, they just check. They're not coming back to about 30 minutes, right? If you don't have a, day, a deputy or a correctional officer, that's a sign that stay right inside of that day room where some jails are differently. Like the other jail that I also worked at, we had deputies inside of the day room, which you got your computer, your desk, da, da, da. This little makeshift tape around like your little protection wall that goes around the, the desk. So some units you have deputies that's inside of the day room with the residents, inmates, or prisoners. Then also you just have day rooms where they're in, but just make sure you go in there and check twice an hour. Anything unusual, uh, checking for contraband, blah, 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 so forth, so on. So he he did that, and uh, it, freaked, it freaked me out the first time. You know, and you see a dead body in a casket. That's different. You, some of y'all might see a dead body on the street. Hey, your boy ain't never seen one. And when I seen it, boy, it freaked me out for the first time. I ain't gonna sit, I'm gonna sit here and look at you. The same way that fellow was looking at me when I looked down and said, come get your tray. So then you had also, uh, <coughs> excuse me, some attempted suicides, <clears throat> which one was a uh, which one we had a female deputy working in a uh, a, 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 a housing unit that has two day rooms on both sides, but it's also a another cell that's like down the hallway a bit, um, which they you know like a, like a watch and. She <clears throat> was in there and she just checked them. Like I said, these guys know, these inmates, residents, prisoners, whatever you want to call them, they know if the deputy just checked this unit or checked me inside of a, I'm like a, like a watch cell, if they just checked me, they're not coming back 20 to 30 minutes later because Something else I'm going to go over. They are watching you more than you are watching them. They are watching your every move that you do all day, every day, to see what you like to do and, and, and can tell you all your tendencies that you like to do when you come to work. They know when you had a bad day. They know when something ain't going right at home. Boy, it's going to be a whole, <clears throat> that's a whole nother video. We're going to get in that about how much they watching you. I might make the, make that the next video. 
For some of y'all here who might, like I said, want to be in this line of work or who are in this field, and y'all can attest that they are watching you the whole time in there and watching your tendencies and see what you like to do on a day-to-day -day basis and see how you stern and who you stern with. Mm. Woo, that might be the video for the bar or the next video I post. Woo, that let you know how it goes down inside of the jail. On the other side, coming from a former deputy sheriff that worked in the jail, correctional officer, worked in a couple of two juvenile correctional facilities. So the other, okay, going back to the story. So she just starts screaming on the radio, sister there in the shoes, sister there in the shoes, sister there in the shoes. Sister, there in the shoes. So we get down there and I get that out the sergeant on shift, open up the cell. And what we have as supervisor, we have called a cut down knife. A cut down knife, matter of fact, I still have mine which is in the washer and dryer room. I should have bought it on me before I made this video. I might bring it the next time so y'all can see what a cut down knife is. A cut down knife is given to the supervisor. It's not, it's a blade, but it's a blade, but it, come, but it comes out, but it's like a U, right? It's, like, it's a U shape like this and goes back like this. It basically has a hook like this. And basically all it is, all, all it is, it's a, it's a blade inside of here. It's a blade right inside of here because that's the blade to when you cut down somebody with a sheet or an object around their neck, you get there quickly and you do like this with the cut down knife, the way it cuts them down. So I pulled out my cut down knife when the uh, female deputy had held them up to take the weight off of the contraband around his neck, took my cut down knife about two times and I had uh, cut down the, the object that he was trying to hang himself with. And luckily, uh, started, <clears throat> started doing CPR. The nurses came around. And luckily and blessingly, we saved this individual. But it goes to show you how fast it can happen. And what, talking to her after it happened, as she was writing her report, another thing I'm going to get into, incident report and report writing. Some of y'all skills are not up to par if you work inside of that field. So as she was stating to me that <clears throat> before she started writing her incident report, because you want to make sure you write it down when it's fresh in your mind. Also, if you, you got uh, notepads that you should be given, handed out by your supervisor or by the jail or where you work, it's a small pad, like a pad, or you can stop at a dollar store. I always keep you a pad in your pocket. I always kept me a pad that I did my head counts on. Also, you keep your pad <clears throat> so you can make write down all your notes, especially when something happened, whether it's a fight, a uh, suicide attempt or whatever it might be, you want to make sure you write down your times and your notes. So when you go back and write your incident report, you can make sure everything pairs up. The CYA. If you don't know what that means, that means cover your ass. Look at you. You want to make sure you always CYA. So prior to her writing her incident report, she had told me, this goes back to something you might hear, woman intuition. Woman intuition, woman intuition, woman intuition. She said, Sarge, I was sitting here. I just checked them. And she said, as soon as I sit down, she said, something just told me they go back and check him again. She said, because when I talked to him, when I was just back there, he said he was fine. Holding conversation, didn't show no signs of he wanted to do anything to himself as they do. He didn't show no signs. He wanted to do anything to himself or nothing. She said, I went in there, checked on him, talked to him. He was fine. I came back and sat down. And she said, something said, get up and check him again. She said, something ain't right. And that's when she got up, went back there, and saw him trying to commit suicide by trying to hang himself. Man, he was, uh, 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 he was in his last days when she called and opened the door and then she started holding him up. And that's when I came around and cut him down with the cut down knife, started doing CPR on the young man, and medical staff came around, we was able to save this young man's life. But that's just some of the stuff that goes down inside of the jail and <clears throat> the correction facilities. I can't speak on it because I never worked inside of that, what we call the, the prison system, the penitentiary. And then the stories I heard from individuals that came from the prison system that came to the jail they got far worse. Because when you got somebody that got life, what 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 I care about what huh? What you say? Who you talking to? Boy, I got life plus but if I die, I got to come back and do 38 more years. 
Who you talking to? Yeah. Then another quick quick story too before I let y'all go. Uh, this one, this one, the, the inmates, they ain't got time for it and getting locked down because you won't do something yourself. This is in the middle of the daytime. Deputy! 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 We go around. What, what, what's going on? What's going on? They may say, man, come get this damn fool up here trying to kill himself. So we all go in the day room, boom, 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 and lo and behold, he was trying. It was a damn shaky attempt. But that's something they ain't had time for. And as we taking him out, man, you can hear all the guys, man, get your ass up out here, man. Anybody got time for that, man? I don't feel lock us down, man. They got, it was something coming on that thing that night. This man, something, something was coming on that night. They weren't trying to hear. Deputy, this man literally told me, man, that man up there, man, trying to kill himself, man. Get, get this damn man up out here. That's exactly what he told me. Get this man up out here. And we rush in, like I said. He trying to do some harm to himself. Man, they said, man, and we come down the steps with the guy. They said, man, get his ass up out here. Sometimes the inmates, residents, who we want to call them, they ain't got time for no foolishness. Get his ass up out here. Oh, boy, I got some stories I'm going to tell y'all. If you want to work in a correctional facility, if you want to work in a jail, how do you work? Can you work inside of the jail? And what goes down inside of the jail? Because your boy Antoine Scott, a.k.a. Mr. Look at you. That was my life before this life of a stand-up comedian. Boy, I'm going to sit here and look at you. Until next time, can you do the line of work? Can you? Boy, I'm going to sit here and look at you.